Hey everyone, today we're gonna go over the Chrome Amp version 1.1 board and its assembly. First of all, we're gonna talk about the components on in the blank board itself, kind of the layout, the components that's gonna be on it. We'll talk about some of the speaker options and the power options, and then we're gonna hopefully bench test it and, and show it in the, in the works. Got the board in a couple of different colors. They're identical. I just had them the made up at different spots. Essentially, um, I'm just going to use the darker board because I think the contrast uh, shows up a little better. Um, things I want to talk about on here is first of all the power options. These two pins right here. It's designed uh, your positives right here and negative for your battery input and you would use your 9 volt to 12 volt DC um, direct current in. Now the important part is, is this board is designed and uh, to use a switch meaning you can have this powered up directly to your battery but there won't be any power consumption until these two switch pins are jumpered. So this this connects the the ground and completes the circuit and at that point when this these are joined um, your, your amp is powered on. The LED would come on as well. Um, the next thing, pins I want to talk about, um, these ones up here are, I added them for a voltage meter. Um, it's a kind of a nice, uh, nice thing to have is you can add a little voltage meter. It's also nice for a power on indicator and uh, if you want. They're extra pins. They power on when the switch is bridged. These three pins right here are for the volume potentiometer um, and this is your audio in. So this would be your potentiometer first pin. The center pin here is your potentiometer out pin and this of course is ground. Up here is the gain potentiometer and main in pin for the um, potentiometer. This is going out. So you, this is your first pin this one's going out. This is the speaker. This is your positive and your negative. Okay, for the assembly, I, I start with the resistors. I start with the lowest profile um, item, and then I go from there. Basically, just find the location, the 10R right here. I just thread it through, bend it in. Then I, I bend them apart on the bottom just to hold them in. I think this is the 330. This is going to be for the LED. And that goes on this. It's marked right here, 330. And this one's a 10K. Spread them out. Then we can, we can solder those up. So what I do... So I'll just heat up the pin at where it touches and be very gentle with the, the board. You don't want to scratch um, any of the board because you could ruin some of the leads. So be very gentle while doing this even when you're snipping off wires. And then um, just want to get a nice shiny tin on there. Not too hard. Okay, we got the resistors done, and now I like to do um, the the chip socket. This right here is the top of the board, and you don't have the same groove on the bottom. So you can see the same design on the chip right here. I mean, on the board that you just match that. Okay, there we go. And what I do here is I just lay it on my solder board and then just verify that all the pins are sticking out that you didn't bend any under it looks good so what I did there is I 
I got one pin so it attaches it, and I just go through the others. A little bit easier. So we're gonna start with the, the point one UF. And you may need to pinch these pins together just a little bit. Line them up onto the board. When you get it on the other side, just bend those pins apart so that the component stays in. And again, like we did before, we can do the other ones as well. Another point one right next to it. Okay, verify the pins. Looks good. Um, this next one right up here, ceramic capacitor. Just push that down in. And one more. And this one goes right here. We can go ahead and do the LED. And again, just like the uh, capacitors, the longer pin on the LED is positive and the shorter one is the negative. Um, it is important that you get that right or uh, the LED will not work. Put that through. I like to have it flush. Some people like to do it up a little bit and then you can bend it over the side so it may point out. And if you put mount, the way you mount the board, you can have the LED sticking out of your case or your box. Spread that out. So now we've got all the capacitors, resistors, and the LED on the soldered up. At this point we're ready to do some of the jumpers. I like to do the jumpers before the, the height of the board gets too, too much because I usually use the, the weight of the board to hold them in. And we're going to need a couple of doubles, so I just snip those out. Now, jumper pins are, are optional. You can solder directly to these pins uh, if, if you want to make a solid connection and you're not going to be doing any other testing, um, that's perfectly fine. So there we are, we're ready. I, at this point I'd probably go ahead and put the, uh, we're going to put the LM36 chip in. Important to note that the chip has, pin 1 has the divot and also the uh, cutout at the top. Again, make sure all the pins are straight so that they'll line up. And don't, don't over force it, go gentle when putting this in. And we'll see if we can do that here. Don't force it too quickly either you'll bend the pins over. You'll feel it just kind of snap in. There you go. Now we got the capacitors put on. I just start with the smallest first and again these are uh, there's positive and negative so the longer wire is positive the shorter wire is negative. Make sure you match that on the board it's very important. And they again are clearly marked. This is the 10. And that just pushes all the way down through. You can put that down flush and bend the wires over so it stays in. Here's the 100. Here's the 1000.
should be looking at um, a completed board right there. So, a three inch, three to four inch, four ohm to eight ohm speaker is your target for this amp. I like to use the uh, I have, just because I have a bunch of these. I have these uh, jumper wires and I end up typically cutting them in half and then using them for different parts. And in this case, that's what we're going to do. We're going to solder up for uh, the stereo jack to make it a switch and the audio input. We're going to use the same cables for it with the potentiometers. Use a wire stripper. I, I just typically just use my razor. Um, be careful not to cut off any of the metal. Just run it around, get the expose the wire. Dunk these a little bit into some of the flux, so that when I tin them, the, co the solder just goes in them really well. So. Heat up the wire and then add the the uh, solder, nice and tinned. This makes it so when you solder them up to other solder, it, they just stick. These two right here are going to be the ground jumpers to complete the circuit on ground. And this is your audio signal right here, this one. Now if you look at um, a guitar lead, this whole section right here is ground. So when it's inserted, you can imagine it inserted right here, that these first two pins from the outside of the jack complete the circuit, and that's where our switch comes from. So these two pins are wired up to the switch, and this tip right here is this pin, and that's your audio end just like we were showing you on the board. So we've got these two here are the switch and the audio in is the tip of the stereo jack. This is ground, we can be ground here. So we're just tinning this up with some solder so that uh, the wire will stick to it real quick. And this stuff heats up so quick. That's ready to wire up. Okay, we finished the, the potentiometers, the audio jack, and the board. We're, we're at a stage here where we can start um, doing the bench test. And so, and it's important to note on the gain you know, I only have to do two. From there, we can start plugging things in. I, I'll just start with the audio jack. Now, we know that these uh, two that are closest to the input jack are going to be switch, the audio switch. And it doesn't matter uh, which one goes on which. Okay. Okay, so we have this component, the audio jack, wired. Now the potentiometer here, pin one is the green, blue is going to be the output wire, the center wire, and the purple in this case is, is going to be ground, and you just plug them in, in that order right here. The gain, you can put that on a switch, like an overdrive, you can just flip it on, flip it off, or not add this at all. If you don't add this, it's going to, it won't have the distortion or the high gain. Uh, it'll just be really clean. The volume will be pretty low, um, but it's kind of cool to use a potentiometer. And in this case, pin one goes up to the very top, and the output center pin goes towards the LED. I just have uh, the speaker here for the bench test that I typically use because I have wires coming out of the back. 
um, yeah, right there. And so this is a, an 8 ohm speaker. The positive uh, line for your speaker goes closest to the 1000 uh, capacitor. And be very, if you're going to plug a live battery like I'm doing here, pay very close attention to the, the, uh, the red is the outside. This is where the switch comes in. So notice how I got my audio jack. It's powered on. LEDs off. Here goes first time. There we go. And I heard the speaker pop. At this time, we can start bench testing. But here, this volume. Turn it up to 100%. That's good. This is all for me. This is no gain. This is where you can get a cigar box, tin can, a jar, whatever you want, and uh, you can assemble it. Now, these um, these grills, the knobs, uh, the base relief hole, I've designed and 3D printed uh, these, and they're freely available on my Thingiverse channel, so you can you can go do those. This is for a three standard three inch speaker found that it fits several types. I've even um, designed the feet, which are a rubbery TPU, and that's 3D printed as well, just set in with a screw. That's about it. Thanks, guys.